Okay, hello everyone, my name is Ryan Krunenberg and I'm one of the instructors here at Pluralsight and today we're going to be talking about the Certified Solutions Architect Associate exam and if you want to pass it on your very first attempt then this video is for you. So let's talk about the exam. Who should take this exam? Well, if you go onto the AWS certification website, it says that anyone who has experience in the following should take this exam. So if you've got experience in AWS technology, or if you've got strong on-premise IT experience and an understanding of mapping on-premise to cloud, or basically anyone with experience working in other cloud services should think about taking this exam. So it's recommended for all associate level qualifications that you have some prior cloud experience and or strong on-premise IT experience. And in the exam blueprint, it says that the target candidate should have at least one year's hands-on experience designing cloud solutions that use AWS services. Now, don't worry if you don't have that experience. I would recommend, however, taking the Certified Cloud Practitioner exam, which is a foundation level series exam, because it will really prepare you for this exam. Now, this exam length is 130 minutes. It has 65 questions on the exam, and the exam questions are either multiple choice or multiple responses. The exam includes 15 unscored questions that don't affect your score. So you have 15 questions on there that you can actually get wrong and it won't fail you in the exam. And then your results for the exam are reported as a scaled score of between 100 to 1000 and the minimum passing score is 720. So you need about 72% to pass the exam. It's 150 US dollars to sit the exam and you can either sit it at a Pearson View testing center or you can do it online, which is a supervised proctored exam, and you can do that at home if you so wish. So what's the best way to prepare for the exam? Well, as always, I like to start with the exam blueprint. So let's go have a look at that now. So the exam blueprint is basically broken down into four subject matters, and they're called domains. And domain one is to design secure architectures, and this is worth 30% of the exam. Domain two is to design resilient architectures, and this is worth 26% of the exam. Domain three is to design high-performing architectures, and this is worth 24%. And then we have domain four, which is to design cost-optimized architectures, and this is worth 20% of the exam. So each domain is then broken down into different task statements, and each task statement then has two separate subsections. So you have knowledge of, and you have skills in. So for example, the first task statement in domain one is to design secure access to AWS resources. And this then requires knowledge of things like access controls and management across multiple accounts, knowledge of AWS federated access and identity services, knowledge of AWS global infrastructure. So like what is an availability zone, for example, AWS security best practices, and then also knowledge of things like the AWS shared responsibility mode. You then also require skills in, and these will be things such as applying AWS security best practices to IAM users and root users, as well as skills in designing a flexible authorization model that includes things like IAM users, groups, roles, and policies, etc. Now, I know that sounds a bit complicated and the exam blueprint is fairly comprehensive, so I recommend you go ahead and read it from start to finish after watching this video. And I'm just gonna summarize each task statement in the four different domains. So we covered off the first task statement in domain one. There's two more, and they are to design secure workloads and applications, and then to determine appropriate data security controls. Moving on to domain two, this is where you have to design resilient architectures, and it was worth 26% of the exam. And basically, we only have two task statements in here. The first one is to design scalable and loosely coupled architectures, and then the second one is to design highly available and or fault tolerant architectures. Domain three was all about designing high performing architectures and worth 24% of the exam. So this is broken down into a number of different task statements. You need to determine high performing and or scalable storage solutions. You need to design high performing and elastic compute solutions. You need high performing database solutions and then you need also high performing data ingestion and transformation solutions. We then have domain four, which is all about designing cost optimized architectures. And this is worth 20% of the exam. 
And this is where you need to design cost optimized storage solutions, compute solutions, database solutions, and network architectures. So those are the four domains. At the end of the exam blueprint, you'll then see that there's an appendix and the appendix contains technologies and concepts that might appear on the exam. It does it at a high level first. So things that will uh, might appear on the exam are things like compute, cost management, databases, disaster recovery, high performance, management and governance, microservices, component delivery, migration and data transfer, networking, connectivity and content delivery, resiliency, security, serverless and event-driven design principles, and then finally storage. So these are very high level ones. But then at the end, it will go into AWS specific services. So it will say things like EC2 will come up in the exam. Then it will say um, other AWS services that won't come up in the exam. So have a quick read through that and that covers off the exam blueprint. So what's the best way to learn everything for the exam? Well, let's go ahead and show you what we can offer you here at Pluralsight. Okay, so here we are on the Pluralsight skills page. If we go ahead and click on browse, we'll be able to see our different certification courses in here. We're going to go across to Amazon Web Services and we're going to scroll right down the bottom and here we can see our Certified Solutions Architect Associate course. Now you see that is 25 hours and 20 minutes in length. It is one of our longer courses. So go ahead and click in there. And you can see here this course is produced by Andrew. And there's a great photo of Andrew in here. And then if we go back, we can now expand the details of the course. And then we can see our table of contents is in here. So we've got 25 different chapters. So we've got our introduction, fundamentals, IAM, S3, EC2, etc. I won't read them all but you can see it is a very comprehensive course. And then we have our practice exams in here, so you can go ahead and do some practice exams as well. Well, thank you for watching everyone. Hopefully you have everything you need to know to get started on your AWS certification journey. If you'd like to take the next steps in your tech learning journey, please sign up for our free tech skill courses below. Thanks for watching, see you later.